Hi, everyone. Welcome to Smart City Institute. This Institute's webinar, Global Perspectives on Smart Cities. I'm Taku Nagumo, Executive Managing Director of Smart City Institute Japan, your host today. And uh, today we have, uh, uh, this is actually the day three of the European Smart City Insp Inspired Week. And uh, we have a representation from the city of Tampere uh, in Finland. I would say most innovative city of the most happiest country in the world. And uh, today's topic is uh, from smart city to data-driven city, the case of Tampere, Finland. Let me introduce the three distinct speakers today. Uh, Mr. Teppo Lantanen, uh, Executive Director, City of Tampere. Second person, Mr. Seppo Hataja, Director of Smart Tampere Program, uh, Business Tampere. The third person, Mr. Mark Niemi, Senior Business Advisor, Business Tampere. Hi, uh, how are you? Fine, thanks. Lovely to be here with you. Thank you for joining us. So uh, let's have a good discussion today. I, as uh, I uh, um, introduced the most innovative city of the happiest country in the world. That's what the uh, Tampere is, right? <laughs> and, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> right, and the today's game plan for viewers is to have uh, three presentation in a row, starting from Teppo-san, and then Seppo-san, and then Mark. Right, each like each stands for like fifteen minutes. Right, it's this is just approximation, and after that we have an open discussion, including comments from the viewers. Viewers who are encouraged to send a message, questions uh, through the uh, chat box, and uh, when you write something to the uh, uh, the speakers, please choose all from the pull down menu. So that way we can share all the writing with the all the viewers. Okay. So without further ado, uh, let's move on to the presentation. So Teppo-san, uh, all, all yours. Thank you, Taksan, and I uh, hope I can now uh, share my screen successfully. Uh, let's see if uh, it works. How about now? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, thank you. It's always a challenge to see how you can uh, start sharing uh, the uh, thinking. So uh, approaching from, from the Tampere uh, end of this, uh, this uh, journey, uh, maybe I'll, I'll just uh, go a little bit uh, back in the history. So we started five years ago to start developing something which we call Smart Tampere program. And the Smart Tampere program was uh, from the beginning to build as a, a broad ecosystem program where we invited uh, all the uh, companies, uh, small startups to big global tech companies to join us uh, to develop a, a smarter, smarter city and, uh, and also the universities, research institutions and the citizens and the public sector uh, to join forces. And, and we've been quite uh, successful because in the last uh, uh, five years, we've been able to uh, do more than 150 pilots with more than 400 companies joining us. Uh, to test different things, but also to see things developing into something which is then uh, put in practice and, and taken into use and built new business cases around that. And uh, what we see as a philosophy is to see that uh, we think the city should be a platform for different things. And I'll, I'll be sharing a little bit of examples of our platforms in the, in the coming slides. But, uh, but the whole city should be uh, started as a, a living lab type of an idea, but then moving from that to, to real platforms and to actually implementing those new things that we have been doing there. So uh, the Smart Tampere program started uh, 2017 and it's coming to an end this year. And uh, the uh, uh, thing which we have been working on right now is to have the next program in place, which will start early next year. And that program will be then moving from the smart city thinking into more a um, data-driven city for citizens type of a thinking. And uh, we have been working on uh, quite challenging uh, goals for us. Even from the, uh, from the beginning of the pro program, we put our aim to be 2025, the city should be uh, primarily offering its services digitally. Uh, by 2030, we should be carbon neutral. Uh, so sustainability has been a very strong part of our program. Um, 
and we have been always aiming at how we can create new solutions together with our partners in the ecosystem uh, and solutions that could at the end um, be improving the everyday life of our citizens and uh, through that we are promoting uh, different technology themes digitalization themes sustainable development themes but also that we see important parties working together with companies and, and improving the business ecosystems through what we have been doing. And from the citizen perspective, it's always a question of how does it improve the everyday life, the well-being, the safety and security of, of individuals. And actually, safety and security is something which has become a very, very important part of what we are doing and what we will do in the future. Uh, but also we see that all the technology will drive for us to be more sustainable, uh, be carbon neutral and even beyond uh, to be bringing new technologies to improve the, uh, you know, the whole ecosystem of our, of our uh, environment. In this uh, new thinking of what a um, data driven city should look like, we have been looking at the concepts of the, you know, smooth everyday life. Uh, of our citizens and we come to the conclusion that it's very much depending on the data so there's a lot of sources of data where the data comes from for example it comes from the health and well-being data the mobility and logistics data from events and travel data and infrastructure security data so we have a lot of data coming from the new technologies that we put in place that people are using uh, and it comes from you know different sources and, and the players who are involved are from public sector from private sector and from third sector so what is the key in all this? Uh, how can we make sure that the data is something we can actually use? And we come to the one word which we think is, is vitally important here. It's about trust. How will people trust that the data is, is being treated in a proper way? Uh, how does the uh, you know, digital identity thinking, my data, that principle that everybody's actually owning their own data and, and the permission to use that data needs to be obtained from the individuals. How does the data security, uh, all the cyber uh, issues, how do they, they uh, which role they play here? And we have the advantage of that, you know, in our city and uh, I think more generally in the Nordic countries, there's a very high trust from the people to the government. So people trusting the government is also bringing us the opportunity to get a permission to use the data, use the data. So we're doing pilots right now, for example, in the um, health and well-being space where we are combining uh, public data on health to the private data on health. We all have our, you know, Fitbits or Polar watches if you're in Finland or whatever in our wrists, wearables and collect a lot of data about our health. I was actually surprised when I just because I'm a Fitbit guy, I've been using Fitbit for 10 years. I was just updating my Fitbit to a new version, and I was totally amazed of all the data that it gives me about my health. And I'm just thinking about, okay, if we can combine all of that uh, to the system so that we would know as the organizers of healthcare that it's responsibility of, of uh, municipalities in Finland, how we can better manage our uh, whole healthcare system, how we could better target our resources if we get more of that information from the people of today and then combine it to the structured healthcare information we have. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but Finland has, I think, the longest record in the world from, from the early 70s. We have structured health data, which is based on social security number uh, on each individual. And that is a huge amount of data, which, which is uh, very valuable for, for future use. But now combining that to the new data that we, every one of us is gathering every day, is really exciting. So that's just one example of how we are seeing the data, use of data going forward in, in our city. Uh, a few words about, you know, how we have been doing this far and what sort of opportunities we give to, uh, to our companies, we give a lot of uh, possibilities to connect to our technology platforms. It could be physical platforms like uh, city districts. We have city districts where we are putting uh, different type of uh, new technologies in place in specifically in infrastructure and energy and also building digital twins on, on those, uh, those uh, city districts. 
we have another physical platform, which is our new tram. We have a living lab car in our new tram where all new technologies can be, uh, can be um, uh, used. But we also built IoT platforms, 5G platforms, LoRa platforms for different purposes, for companies to come and uh, test their technologies and use that and be part uh, of the co-creating new ideas together with us. And that has been a very, very successful way of doing it. So uh, just to mention a few, the 5G platform and ecosystem is an example of something we've done together with Nokia. Uh, I think that's where I have been benefiting from the idea that Nokia is part of our, our city and, and, uh, and has been a long uh, place here, even though times have changed from the four or 5,000 people working for Nokia R&D here to uh, about 1,000 today. But some, at the same time, a huge ecosystem has been born out of that and uh, research institutions like VTT have been very strong part of that and working very very closely with us another example is to thinking about you know how could we improve that how can we uh, move into private 5g networks in the city and if we could do that uh, to give uh, test bed opportunities for different kind of companies with our private 5g networks and using and testing new technology around that for example how we can uh, use new kind of test technology with the, uh, the the lighting infrastructure on 5G. So we are really eager to test uh, that kind of things together with companies and provide that opportunity for companies or a test area for automated traffic, which uh, which is something which definitely is, is in core of our, our thinking about what kind of platforms we can provide to the city. And an IoT platform we have been now, uh, we put up a, a tender process for IoT platform uh, more than a year ago. And now we are up and running uh, with an IoT platform with, with a partner where we're testing new IoT solutions for the city. And all of that brings to back to, okay, a lot of data is being uh, achieved and, and, and uh, accumulated. And how can we use that for future purposes? I mentioned about this tram as a living lab, and uh, I think this is a cool thing. So our tram, uh, we didn't have a tram network before in the city, and the tram is more like a light rail type of a system, very fast and, and, and an efficient way of moving people around. It's also a city development project, so we developed a lot of the city uh, uh, around this tram route. But now we're also um, joined by a number of companies joining us on a living lab. Uh, for a tram car, which uh, allows different new technologies to be tested on a tram and in, in, in live uh, live traffic, and uh, we're very really excited about this opportunity, and uh, and we will see hopefully uh, a lot of new innovative ideas and uh, the prime company operating uh, the, the or bringing the tram um, um, uh, technology and and, and tram cars to us is Skoda Transtech, and they are really excited to build the smartest tram in the world together with us and, and that could be tested here in Tampere. So a lot of things we have been doing and uh, we're building around uh, uh, all the new ideas uh, throughout the years in our Smart Tampere program and developing that now forward into our data-driven program. And uh, I'll be happy to uh, to discuss more in the, in the discussion about that, but uh, let's give uh, Seppo and Mark a chance to uh, uh, give more details of what we have been just uh, uh, hearing and getting the first glimpse about. But, uh, but we're just so excited about the opportunities we see in front of us. And we see a lot of uh, cities uh, having the same uh, ideas and thinking around the Nordics, around Europe. I'm really excited to do uh, this discussion uh, together with, uh, with our friends in Japan. So uh, this uh, very brief introduction from me and uh, happy to have a discussion going forward. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Teppo-san. So let's move on to Seppo-san. Okay, uh, hello everybody. I'm Seppo Hatia, Business Tampere. Good to be here. As Teppo said, uh, we have done quite a lot of uh, development activities uh, in Tampere within recent years and Smart Tampere is one of the example of this program-based economic development that city of Tampere has carried out almost 20 years. I'm heading the Smart Tampere ecosystem part uh, and I have been working in, in economic development roughly now 10 years. Before that I was uh, working for Nokia mobile phones mainly in Tampere so that 
I have seen the uh, constructual change that Teppo mentioned earlier on, how Nokia a little bit collapsed, and then there was a, a quite a large startup com, um, community that was established based on, on this uh, Nokia heritage. And then we started to discuss about ecosystem type of uh, cooperation. So uh, next slide, please. As said, uh, as Teppo already mentioned, our vision is, uh, is to be smart and, and sustainable and, and, uh, and 2021 as uh, a smart number is ending. And as said, we are not doing this alone in a, in a silo, but uh, more openly with various stakeholders and also uh, try to involve the local industry, but also international players in, in this uh, development activities. And um, also the uh, city community, so that uh, we are sharing our own experience in national level and also international level. So we are part of quite many, many international uh, city networks like Open Exile Smart Cities. Uh, next slide, please. Um, actually, I have here a few uh, same slide as, as Teppo, and there is uh, quite a lot of in information so that I'm not going to go very detail all this material, but uh, this is more like also background for you later on to go more detail about these activities. As said, uh, Smart Tampere is ending now 2021. And uh, one thing that I want to point out here is um, the, the new solution that uh, we have now created together with Business Research Institute and, and citizens. So the citizen involved is very important and it's also, also in the future because uh, citizens are also customers in, in many sense. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Smart Tampere uh, program has uh, divided in, in three different sub-programs. Um, ecosystem program that I'm going to um, tell a little bit more later on in this presentation. Then we have digitalization program and it was ended 2020. And the aim of this uh, uh, sub program was to establish and implement uh, various digital uh, type of uh, services and solutions for uh, city organization itself for the service area so that how city can uh, give better services with cost, cost effective way to citizens. So this was some kind of internal, internal development program. And third one is the sustainable Tampere 2030 that is aiming this carbon neutrality in, in that year. And uh, this is quite challenging, especially in Nordic country, because uh, buildings and, and traffic are quite a big uh, problem in that sense, if you, if you seek the, the carbon neutrality. Uh, next slide, please. Ecosystem and teams, um, this is just the title and I would like to show this picture because it's a uh, uh, Lake Nasijärvi, it's, uh, it's uh, winter time, minus 25 degrees and sun is shining, so this is the real winter and, and this is just the indication that uh, based on the global warming, we really want that we can have this kind of pictures also in the future in, in Tampere, so that there is real winters and snow and that sort of thing. So next slide, please. Okay, our ecosystem targets, um, um, so that, uh, uh, of course, we want to reform and grow the Tampere region with the companies to uh, doing this ecosystem creation and also create possibilities to companies uh, to create a new solution and, and test and, and also after that get the reference and scale with the other, other cities. So this is also important to, to remember that one city is not a market. So especially in Europe and, 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 uh, and also widely, there is a lot of uh, Tampere size of cities, but uh, and if we calculate them, them together, they, it's, a, it's a huge amount of population and also, also huge opportunity for the business, for the, for the industry. 
Um, the last one here is also important based on that, so that uh, that we would like to be attractive. Uh, also, not just uh, for visitors, but business environment, uh, environment, and for local companies to gain the international market, and also try to uh, seek those uh, international talents, young people to come to live and work in Tampere. Uh, next, please. Uh, this is the picture of a smart Tampere teams. I'm not going to go any detail of this, but this indicates the areas that we are now focusing and working. So there is uh, six verticals listed here, and then we have uh, three of those um, uh, horizontal, uh, artificial intelligence, analytics, connectivity, safety and security. And Mark Kuniemi is going to tell a little bit more about connectivity and uh, uh, related uh, to the IoT type of activities related to this uh, connectivity um, uh, themes. And this is, of course, based on Nokia history and uh, that kind of competence that we have quite a lot of in Finland and especially in Tampere, so that uh, this indicates also the, the strong areas that uh, that we are we are focusing, but also looking the like the future of mobility. It's it's real important, but there is a lot of also business possibilities to various stakeholders. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, while you're cre creation. Um, I think this is um, this is something new that was happening in in Finland roughly uh, five, six, seven years ago. Um, we started to think about this uh, people involvement, and and we are now talking about public-private people partnership. So, so to speak, um, quadruple helix type of approach, and and Taksa knows this also very well because um, you are also thinking in the in the very same way. So that we have to engage the the people also, and there is also. Uh, different kind of values when we are doing this cooperation so that that has to be also also know that what is the economic value social value community value and of, of course also the research values and this is uh, some kind of uh, uh, not not like a background but uh, the idea how we how we should uh, organize everything what we are doing with uh, with other stakeholders uh, next slide please um, the objective of this co-creation co is uh, quite simply so that um, we try to find out uh, what kind of innovative services and solution we can build on, on the e existing city infrastructure. So this is the example that we have this infrastructure and there is uh, people are living already there so that how to improve that. Uh, that kind of environment. We have also, as Teppo mentioned, a new district that we are we are using as a as a platform, city platform, but also also uh, developing the future cities in in best possible way. Also to to uh, keep in the mind the sustainable development and carbon neutrality. Okay, next slide, please. A uh, few facts about uh, the impact of the ecosystem, so that what we have been able to gain through this, um, this uh, development activities project uh, based of working approach, so that uh, we have uh, contacted um, roughly 100 uh, co-creation cases uh, with companies in the ecosystem, and, uh, and we have uh, roughly 60 solutions as a result for various companies as a reference. And there is almost um, more than, well, let's say less than 20 now commercialized uh, uh, solution already solved. Maybe the message in this picture is that uh, even we have a lot of this kind of agile uh, way of testing and, and 
doing drier. So after that, there is a long queue or a long way to the real business, and uh, and cities are not uh, not uh, very rapidly implementing uh, various things. So that there is a quite long lead time from the first trial to the to the scalable business. So this is also good to keep in your mind. Uh, next one. Um, uh, what is the impact of uh, of the ecosystem way of working so that what the city city receives and what the companies and 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 um, citizens so these are listed here and quite uh, evitable uh, facts so that um, I'm not going to go through these but there has to be this kind of understanding about uh, what various stakeholders are getting out of this kind of cooperation and uh, next one please a uh, few words about this digitalization sub program that was ended 2020 so next please um, as said earlier on the aim of this uh, digitalization program was um, to do a lot of uh, technology development experiments and, and sort of things in order to understand the, the way how city is now currently working and what is the, the way to get and uh, offer those services in in digital way uh, based on, on our target 2025 so that there is uh, uh, better services and cost saving for for the city uh, next one and a few examples of um, uh, smart city uh, co-creation examples. Uh, next one. This is an uh, interesting um, example. I just picked this because I know that in Japan you are quite uh, favorite for robotics and you have a huge amount of uh, uh, expertise and long history with robots. So this is an uh, interesting uh, um, uh, example of how uh, humanoid robot can help children to learn different languages and, and this was a quite big surprise uh, when we started to do this kind of uh, testing in the very very early phase and there was a lot of uh, question marks and things like that but the result was e extremely good and now this is the one example that uh, that uh, has uh, this kind of uh, solution has uh, further developed and also scaled uh, uh, outside of Tampere and I guess they are now also seeking customers outside of Finland. So this is uh, one uh, this kind of concrete example of technology, how technology can help also children education. Uh, next one please. Uh, Tampere Finland application, this is uh, uh, interesting example for that reason that, uh, that uh, as I think you all know that there is huge amount of various application that you can download in your in your phone and uh, that's the problem so that if uh, here you can see the, the picture of the of the user interface so that um, the idea here is uh, to collect um, uh, various uh, city of services in best uh, way to the end user, to the citizen, so that you can get uh, exactly that information or that service that you want to use, so that you can select various uh, sub-services uh, in, in your app, so that it's included almost everything you want, but of course individual people are using different uh, type of services or different ways, so this is the, this is the outcome of this kind of open innovation so that we talk that there might be tens of services that uh, people are downloading, but it's not the case so that people are willing to have some kind of comprehensive way to get the city services and, and this has been now downloaded over uh, 100,000 times and it's a quite uh, remarkable number as we have the population in Tampere is 240,000 so this is uh, this is example that it was uh, well uh, well started to use in 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 the in the uh, amount of citizens uh, next please 
Uh, these are uh, few slides now about uh, uh, using the existing infrastructure for the for the create a new service with uh, with companies. I'm not going to go uh, through this. There is automatic log condition monitoring and traffic camera uh, road maintenance type of uh, things. So uh, next, please. And here is the continuation. So parking space real-time monitoring quite simple cases but uh, also quite uh, useful for the end user that you can optimize how you can uh, move around in the city and park your car and that sort of daily basis things uh, next one okay this is also nice uh, winter picture uh, few words about the platforms that also Teppo mentioned so next please we have uh, a few uh, those technologies platform. Marku is telling more about Hervanta testbed, but uh, one, uh, one important um, um, platform is our IoT platform that uh, we have now started with uh, testing very small scale. And then we have went through the procurement uh, approach that now we have invested um, the, the city IoT platform, and the first um, um, solution is um, is uh, luminous and uh, smart lightning. But it's also possible, and we are also including and adding various sensors in the future. And and then coming back to what Teppo said, that the data driven, so that there is a huge amount of data that are able to be collected uh, through various sensors and and using this IoT platform. So this is the quite technical platform, but it's giving uh, huge possibilities to develop new services for citizens. And the last one here is the smart rail ecosystem that Teppo already mentioned. So this is now a new one that we started operating just a few months ago, and there is a lot of interest about uh, how we can use the smart RAM as a, as a living lab concept. Uh, next one, please. Um, okay, I skipped this. This is the IoT platform um, from pilots to reality. I already already explained this, and, and Marco is coming back to this later on. So next, please. And let's skip this also. Next, please. Uh, here, Aranta is a new new district that Teppo also mentioned, and this is now the future that we are investing a lot of and there will be 25,000 inhabitants and uh, and it's going to be, be uh, uh, in very important uh, piloting platform in many, many ways and, and many cases and there are we also looking for uh, cooperation uh, with um, various stakeholders like university, VTT, and of course companies, not just local companies, but national and international players. So this is the this is the this is the future infrastructure investment that we are gaining quite a lot of in the future. So next, please. And finally, what Tepp also already mentioned, we have the smart city conference and expo week. Uh, end of January, beginning of uh, February, and there are the teams that we are now concentrating on, and there is a lot of information and presentation and material about what we have done, not just in Smart Tampere, but, uh, but in, Tampere, in Tampere widely, and also within the six city strategy, within those six largest cities in Finland, as we have cooperated quite a lot of with recent years and and this is the quite nice um, and hopefully quite high quality event to explain all that uh, result what we have been able to done within those recent years so i think um, i think uh, next slide and i think that's the last one so that you can follow us going to smarttampere.fi and get more information so thank you very much Thank you, Sepasan. Okay, let's move on to Moaksan. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, let's see. Okay, maybe not. Okay, so 
And thanks for the invitation. Happy to be here. I'm maybe giving you a little bit more technical, technological perspective on, on some of the things that uh, Teppo and Seppo already highlighted. I'm giving you a few, few examples on what we have been doing with different IoT pilots and, and these test beds. Uh, but to start with, uh, I, I took here a slide from Nokia actually that uh, illustrates some of the key trends that we are seeing right now. So first of all, of course, the connected devices, number of connected devices uh, increase in very rapid phase. And uh, that, of course, means that the data inflow from those devices is, is you know, increasing by day. And uh, uh, data is, of course, good for the AI and machine learning type of algorithms, because uh, for those, more data you have, more accurate results you get. So from that perspective, it's, it's good. But of course, you need uh, you know, very good infrastructure to transport that data. And then you need some um, systematic, uh, well thought uh, platforms where to store those, that data. And uh, this is, uh, these are the uh, you know, things that we have been practicing uh, via some pilots. Then another key trend, uh, I think, is that uh, things are moving to uh, ecosystem type type of uh, uh, model. So uh, it's uh, very common that, that companies work together, companies work with universities and also with, with the public sector because it's very hard in this very complex world to, you know, make uh, standalone solutions on your own. So you, you need help basically from others. And uh, it is expected that this kind of ecosystem type of uh, uh, business will be a significant portion, portion of the economic uh, output throughout the world. And uh, this ecosystem, uh, uh, areas that Seppo highlighted in his presentation is one way of, you know, uh, fostering that development in, in small scale in Tampere. Then, of course, uh, you know, you need to do something with the data and uh, AI is, is a very big development there, as, as we all know. I mean, in factory type of environments in logistics, you see that already. So huge productivity gains have been already achieved in those areas. And if you then think about what these trends mean from the city perspective or Tampere perspective, uh, this data needs to be handled. And, and therefore, you, you need, as a city, you need data strategy and architecture that scales. And uh, we have been, you know, experimenting this with, with, with a few pilots. And then we are also part of the international city network where this architecture interface issues are also addressed. So a cooperation in, the, cooperation in that area is a key, uh, I think. But then if you think about this ecosystem type of uh, working, that of course calls for open interfaces, open principles. Otherwise it, it's very hard to you know, cooperate with different parties. And this kind of closed world garden type of uh, approaches are not, uh, not sustainable in, in my opinion, in our opinion especially in the city environment where you have a very wide variety of different um, you know, applications um, that you have. So everything from street maintenance to healthcare, from education. So it's basically the whole, whole sector of life that you uh, need to address. 
then this productivity uh, gains, I think there's huge untapped potential for the cities in this, this, this area. And uh, these examples that I'm giving in, in my presentation are somehow trying to highlight some of the potential that we have seen and we have been experimenting with. It's just a glimpse of, uh, uh, of what is there to come, but uh, it, it's for you to give some idea on how, how we see things and uh, how, what we have been uh, learning throughout our journey over the last five years or so. <clears throat> I mentioned that the, this uh, uh, big, big amount of data needs some infrastructure where you transport that. And I, I think basically all the cities in the world have this kind of basic infrastructure in, in place already. And that is the streetlight infrastructure. And we have been doing in Tampere several pilots with different techniques on how to use the existing streetlight infra as a carrier for wireless technologies. This is an example in one part of the city where we tested this kind of mess based uh, small range wireless uh, radio techniques. Uh, so the idea here is that the wireless nodes talk to each other and by that extent the coverage. So you basically only need a small device on top of the luminaire to, to build this infra. And this kind of technique we have been testing, for example, waste bin, uh, fill level, uh, parking space uh, uh, situation. Uh, it is very suitable for, for many, many types of small IoT applications and uh, fairly uh, cheap to extend the coverage. And um, in, in this pilot, we had uh, over 400 different devices in one part of the city, as I said, and, and very, very successful results. Uh, I think we are extending the pilot to real operation going forward. Another example, uh, also using 5G, uh, sorry, street light infrastructure, but, it, but in, in this case, uh, based on 5G techniques, this is a pilot that we have done together with Nokia in another, another part of the city of Tampere. We installed um, nine base stations to street lights. You can see the installation in the picture. And uh, what is interesting here is that, that there is a fiber cable going between all, all of the base stations. So basically you, you get to a millisecond level delays that enables uh, remote control of devices and autonomous vehicles, for example. And, as we speak, we are developing this area towards this kind of uh, autonomous vehicles testbed for, for companies and universities. And to note, it's not a closed area, so it's, it's part of a normal city infrastructure. So the uh, idea is that uh, uh, it is also, you know, maybe alleviating some of the concerns the normal citizens might have when you start seeing autonomous vehicles being tested and maybe also in a real operation in a real city environment it kind of helps to you know um, lift maybe some of the concerns people might have this is one one example of what we have been doing then going to some of the iot cases uh, to give you some idea on, on the, you know, effectivity savings potential. Uh, this is an example where these um, small devices on top of the luminaires that I showed in the er earlier pixel also have a motion sensor 
to monitor the status of the pole. And this is then used to monitor the condition of the metal. And this can be then used as a predictive maintenance for streetlight poles to avoid accidents, uh, to avoid unnecessary uh, maintenance site visits and, uh, and so forth. Tampere has a very you know, wide landscape, so the city has been spread quite widely. So sometimes this maintenance visit, visits can be a significant cost. And with, with this kind of very cheap uh, sensors, we, we get uh, major savings in this area. So you need to go there only when, when needed. Also, for the operator, there's a constant dashboard on, on the situation. So he knows that the lights are operating as, as, uh, as they should be. And uh, everything is, is OK. So just a small practical example. This is another pilot that we have been doing. Uh, we installed a few sensors to this kind of water pumps. And uh, this is also condition monitoring for those pumps for predictive maintenance purposes. So with, with the motion sensors and some uh, AI analytics on, on the data, we, we get pretty accurate data on how the bearings are working. Is, is there any problem to be expected in the future uh, or any other issues you might have? So combination of data and AI and dashboard for the operator gives you major savings. Uh, in, interestingly, in this pilot, we had one very new pump that was still under warranty when we installed the sensors. And it turned out there was a significant problem in this pump. And uh, it, it was then replaced under warranty conditions. But uh, if we haven't had the sensor there, it's probably, uh, it, it would have been you know, broken after the warranty. So, we kind of got the uh, investment back in one case, in this case, many fold, I, I would say. Another example on camera based techniques. I think cameras are very interesting uh, device because cities already have a lot of cameras for traffic monitoring for for safety purposes and so forth. So they are there all already. And image processing uh, camera uh, image uh, uh, algorithms are developing at a very rapid pace. So with one infra, one device camera, you, you can dig out very different uh, information from the same data feed. And in this case, we we used cameras to monitor uh, parking space uh, uh, situation, so free or occupied situation in, in one area. Uh, and uh, got quite, quite, quite successful results with this. But with, with the same cameras, you can also monitor street condition uh, if, if the street is slippery or, or wet if there's maintenance needed, uh, accidents, so forth. So one infra, one data source, many different applications. So quite, quite effective. I, I think this type of uh, technology has a lot of potential going forward also. Uh, this Tampere.Finland application was all, already mentioned. And uh, some of these examples can be also uh, shared with, uh, with the citizens through this application. For example, this uh, parking space 
situation uh, is put into this small application that you can download free of charge to your phone and you get uh, you know basically real-time status of the parking situation it can be extended in many many other cases uh, as well so it's it's in a way a good tool for the city authorities to to kind of discuss exchange with, with the citizens uh, I think overall, I think these techniques have a huge savings potential. Also, they are a way to combat the climate change. So when you reduce, for example, maintenance uh, cases, you of course reduce the carbon footprint. Also with the sparking space information, you avoid unnecessary traffic to find for places. For example, people can plan, plan for the trips automatically so i think uh, data and good dashboards are the key to you know address these issues and uh, as uh, seppo and teppo already mentioned we have we are very happy with the pilot results and we are actually investing into a real uh, iot platform that you know takes these things to a next step and enables us to extend to a new areas. So this was a short glimpse of what we have been doing over the first, uh, last uh, four or five years. I hope you, you know, got some idea on our thinking and uh, I'll stop here for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mark San. So please, everyone, come back to the screen. We'll have uh, open discussion time. Yeah. And the Teppo San. <laughs> Maybe step away a little bit. <laughs> Let's uh, spice up a little bit to uh, more open discussion. And uh, I would like to start from rather uh, easy question or entry level question to Tampere, Finland. You know, listen to what's been uh, presented by three of you. You know, always a uh, sense of community, a sense of collaboration. It's the mind first, right? If you're talking to uh, different countries or let's say somewhere in the United States or other countries, you know, the first language you will hear is a compete and win. But, uh, you know, of course, you know, market mechanism is always uh, uh, an integral part of our life. But still, uh, listening to uh, your presentation, a sense of community, cooperatism, uh, collective impact, you know, the teamwork, uh, those words echoes around in my mind. So how do you describe, you know, the unique culture of our spirit of, uh, you know, <clears throat> Finnish people uh, in designing the smart cities. Yes, if I start with that, I think that um, that is something which is definitely a strength. Uh, especially in Tampere, we have been enjoying that uh, uh, very close cooperation. Some of our ICT companies have uh, said that, hey, we want to be the Silicon Valley of Europe. And I said, I can understand that, but if Looking at from my experience in Silicon Valley, what is the most valuable is actually the way that people work together, the way that they are open and share ideas and, and, and you know, take ideas from others. And I think that works very well in, in, in our, uh, our ecosystem. So people from different organizations, they come and talk and openly uh, share ideas and, and are not uh, jealous about the, the ideas of, of you know, uh, sharing them with others. So I think this is one of the key features in the system itself. And, uh, if I would also uh, use the opportunity to respond, one of the questions about Espo, comparing Espo and Tampere, I think that uh, even there you can see that there's a slight difference that Tampere is even more, you know, open down to earth uh, culture in the city than the capital region, where Espo is part of the capital region. So we sort of enjoy a very um, uh, down to earth, uh, low hierarchy uh, way of co collaborating with each other. And I think that creates one of the strengths for us. Um, the other difference might be with Espo that we have much more uh, breadth in our, in our uh, 
ways that we have been doing and we've been implementing much more of different type of uh, pilots and, and, and things on different uh, elements of, of smart city. But we work very closely together with all the six big cities in Finland. So we have a very, very uh, many projects together, joint projects together, as we do within the Nordics as well. So we have a Nordic smart city network of 20 plus Nordic cities. And we also share, it's a practical, pragmatic network of working together on, on different uh, themes and pilots. So you could almost say that it's so the similar cultural things expand to the rest of the Nordics quite a lot as well. And uh, if I add um, to this what Teppo said, so that it's also some kind of lessons to learn. So Finland is a quite small nation and small country so that we have found out that we cannot do a, a, everything by own self. We have to cooperate and it's, uh, it's the open innovation is uh, is maybe maybe also some kind of lessons learned what Nokia did in mobile phone business and industry. And e even in Nokia time, we started this Meko. If you remember the Meko platform, it was the uh, Linux based open open platform and it was uh, started in, in Tampere also. So that there is this kind of, uh, I don't know, is it culture or what, whatever is it, but uh, I think it's quite normal way how we are thinking and, and willing to cooperate with each other and, and not just other cities in, in Finland, but as Teppo said, Nordic and also also in European and, and global level. So that's maybe the reason. Mm, I see. Thank you very much. And uh, another word I frequently, frequently hear from the uh, people in Finland is Nokia, of course. And uh, of course, you know, you describe Nokia was, you know, the kind of a legacy already. But uh, looking around and meeting with the uh, people in Finland, the ex uh, Nokia people are the seeds of innovation, so to speak, because ice everywhere in the important places in Finland. How did it work uh, for Tampere or maybe Finland at large? Um, if I start uh, so that um, uh, shortly the history so that um, when Nokia was expanding, so uh, there was a um, lot of a um, lot of uh, students in, in University of Tampere by that time so that uh, we were able to increase uh, the population and program development activities uh, mostly in Tampere so that there was uh, there was need in the in the company and then there was opportunity in city to offer because there was digital signal processing uh, uh, high quality education in Tampere by those days so that was the reason why we were able to grow and then when uh, things uh, went as they went so that there was already a lot of experienced people that were um, used to work in international environment and then they decided to to establish those startup companies and it was a big surprise there was the Nokia bridge program that I was also also managing that we thought that there might be just few uh, few uh, companies to be established and there was more than 500 in in bridge program and it was a quite big surprise because we we were not uh, thinking that Finland is not the Silicon Valley that we are not having this kind of startup culture and uh, Tampere has been a city of uh, large international manufacturing uh, companies uh, for decades so that uh, it was quite uh, interesting and quite uh, rapid constructual sense that what happened and that was supporting also this open innovation because the people were working in the same same uh, big company and then they established own small companies and those small companies were doing and are still doing a lot of cooperation because people knew each other from their history. Mm. So did you see a kind of a change in mindset from, you know, the big company of orientation to more startups on the ground? Uh, you know, people may say, don't put all the eggs in one basket, right? So if you have many startups or many innovation elsewhere, then somewhere you may fail, but, you know, you, you, you can still survive. And uh, I, I kind of feel the kind of the mindset that the Finland shifted the, the kind of mindset from the Nokia big global company, you know, big pillar to, okay, innovation everywhere. Uh, am I correct to say that? 
think you are. I think that one of the we've been saying here that one of the greatest uh, uh, good things that happened to us here in the region was that Nokia was uh, was was sort of going down and and, and decreasing the, the number of people because they were too focused on one thing and one company. And now a lot of talent went into smaller companies and brought much more innovation into into the play. And uh, I think that we've seen this is an. Uh, Kind of a phenomenon we've seen in other cities. I've spoken to people in Eindhoven, and Eindhoven was a big Philips uh, location, and uh, then Philips started to close down uh, their their facilities there, and that boomed Eindhoven as one of the uh, the centers for technology and new innovation in that area. So I think that uh, we have uh, similar experience here, and and it's definitely changed changed the landscape. So I think that's much much better situation now when we have hundreds of companies. You know, uh, biggest them might employ you know a thousand people or so, but a lot of them employ you know from fifty people to to five hundred people, and then they are doing a lot of uh, really really good stuff, developing new things that never would have been able to do uh, in the in the sort of a old old uh, structure that we had. So I think yes, absolutely, we have changed that mindset totally. Okay, uh, let me uh, shift to the next question. So I, I focused on the cooperation side, then the next uh, question is more focused on the civic engagement or participation. It's another uh, in, in interesting topic to talk about. If you uh, look into the Japanese uh, situation, the, the younger generation tend to, you know, uh, not vo voting for election. So apathetic a little bit because uh, one vote by one person doesn't really count a, a much, right? So particularly younger people are stepping out of the political arena. Maybe they will come back when they get the children or sometime later. But uh, th th there's a tendency that the polit political arena is kind of a losing the attraction. And the uh, same way for the local uh, communities, people are a little bit fragmented but you know if you look at the nordic countries uh finland uh, and uh Tampere, i still see a lot of co social cohesion and uh, you know sense of uh, participation uh, which is reflected in your term ecosystem so where does it come from actually and how can you maintain that you know the the, the, the kind of environment or the mindset Again, I think it's, it's, it's a really good question. And uh, we do think that we have to develop ourselves all the time as well. So we talk a lot about uh, different forms of participation, different forms of digital participation as well. Mm -hmm. So for example, we are using one of the things we have uh, with our partner, Barcelona, we've taken a, uh, a platform called Desidim, which we are using for our digital participation and, and participatory budgeting together with Helsinki, where we do the same thing, and together with Stavanger and some other cities. And uh, I think that this is uh, developing the participation even further, because as you said, the traditional way of, uh, of participating through elections is, is definitely getting, getting less attention. And there are less, especially the young people, are less and less people who, who think that they you know, are interested in voting. So we need to find out how we can make the participation possible uh, in, in, you know, the close by where they are and how they feel about, you know, things are important to them. Um, so, so I think that that is something we also need to develop a lot. Still, there is uh, a lot of, uh, uh, say, old good uh, thinking in the Finnish society where we get a lot of uh, uh, benefits from, you know, the trusts and the fact that people are, are still, you know, happy, happy taxpayers, and, and they, they, they still believe that the system works so that they can be trusting on the use of uh, public uh, money uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a good way, so that it keeps us involved in the society. But we have to be aware of these changes. We have to be uh, uh, really thinking about how can we make sure that we keep the, the, the participant participation of, of the younger generation and what tools we need for that. And that's probably something else that we had in the history. And we also think that the digital tools we need, and we try to build like the Tampere app, which was, which was uh, mentioned, we try to build into that much more uh, ways of people to actually participate in the city decision-making using the app as their tool, as a way of, of, of uh, in, 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 in implementing and uh, uh, 
and, and impacting on the city decisions. So I think this is something which uh, which needs a lot of work for for all of us, and I think we all share the same uh, same sort of a challenge. Good to know. Good to know that. Uh... Tampere is also using the dissident. <laughs> Some of the <laughs> Japanese cities have started to use it actually. And then mm -hmm. uh, as a result, the high school students are more involved and in, you know opinion opinionating their you know, ideas. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, nice to know. And uh, let's shift the uh, question to the to the uh, uh, stories uh, Mark shared. So I was interesting, it was interesting to see some of the existing infrastructure was with a little tweaked into a new infrastructure like you know the um uh the street rights it's turned out to be local 5g type of uh you know networking uh, environment uh how did you come up with those you know you know not big innovation but you know preserving what's being already there but turning out to to, to new life with little flash of ideas how did you come up with those uh, you know little innovation is that the collaboration with the, the, the local universities or how does it come? Well, the 5G network started as a co cooperation with Nokia. So it, it was a joint effort. And uh, basically Nokia wanted to you know, maybe learn more about what does it mean to build 5G networks in that kind of uh, setup. And from the city perspective, I think we wanted to know also what does it mean for the cities to be involved in this kind of, uh, you know, setup and uh, building networks in, in this way. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, university was also, I didn't mention, mention that, but the university is close by to the area, so they have a similar network at their side, it's very same, and they they then were more interested in uh, you know basic research on, on the radio uh, things and, and so forth. So it was uh, you know a little bit different interests, uh, and we found a common you know ground. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, at the end of the day, everybody was quite quite happy. And uh, I think uh, from city perspective we learned a lot on kind of technical side what what does it cost and what does it mean to build networks in the city environment and and then you know, the next question is then that um, what does it mean for the cities to be involved from the business side so we, can we use the city asset as a you know somehow you know as a business or or what would be the model if we extend the network uh, throughout the city? And that is uh, an ongoing discussion. We are actually uh, building a new, a different uh, type of technology or similar setup in a different part of the city. And uh, I think the business aspect is also one element there. So learning more about that as well. Oh, I see. About, if, uh, I, if I quickly, yeah. sorry, if I quickly add, uh, I think uh, there is uh, maybe also some kind of fundamental and change going on because in early days, operators were investing in the infrastructure for telecom communication. I think uh, now the situation is changing and it's not going to be the same kind of uh, game anymore. So that uh, there might be also other other stakeholders that are investing and and the question is that uh, does any city have any role in this infrastructure of this uh, future communication and data driven city that was also presented here so that uh, i think this is a quite interesting fundamental uh, game change going on i see also think uh, just to add there, Tampere, city of Tampere has a lot of fiber network and we are extending that fiber network also. And that asset has been used in that pilot that I mentioned also. And that is you know, placed to the picture as, as well, how, how this fiber can be used maybe in the future for the benefit of, of the whole community. community. I see. How, how, how do you describe the relationship between 
the key stakeholders in in the city, like right? you know the uh, city council, right, and uh, the, the the university and uh, uh, business uh, people and uh, civic society. Are they on an equal footing, or somebody, or some of them is leading the entire ecosystem? What's kind of temperature amongst these uh, stakeholders? I think we've been trying to uh, keep as much as possible the, uh, the the sort of a city role. Uh, we need to make sure that things are moving forward. But mm. if there's somebody else who can take more of the lead, we, we allow you know them to take the lead. But we are still you know making sure that everything uh, is working as as we want to. But uh, we have a full support of our political leadership. So even though we had a change in the uh, in the uh, majority and change of mayor. Um, this year uh, hasn't changed really the way that we are operating uh, in, 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 and, and looking at the future. Um, the same goes with uh, the cooperation with universities and research institutions is quite seamless and they are very, very close to us. I think the business is probably more challenging because uh, the companies always need to also look at their own interests and see, you know, what's in it for them and find the business models of, you know, why to be involved. So sometimes you need to be a little bit more imaginative and, and a little bit more creative to to find you know the, the reasons for the companies to to come along but uh, i think that we've been successfully uh, doing that as well so but that's something we need to definitely work on on, on most and then with the civic society the, the sort of a third sector organizations and, and and citizens that is also something which you know is not that uh, uh, constant the way that they are involved as it might be, but it's also the nature of things that they just come interested when they are interested in something and when they aren't, then mm -hmm. it's sometimes that we get less of a participation in, in that uh, in that sense. So uh, I think that uh, in, uh, overall, you know, we have been quite good at uh, quite good at attracting the different uh, parties to come and play along with us and. Uh, and just answering to to Kudo's question on the on the chat box, which is about uh, inviting the other companies to join us from, for example, from Japan, we're really happy to do that. We're really happy to uh, invite uh, companies to join our ecosystem. We have already companies, uh, foreign companies, who don't have a physical presence here in Tampere being part of our program, and, and we would love to see that because we don't believe that everything can be invented here, and we should definitely be uh, be picking up the best brains in the world to develop great new solutions. So therefore, I would really welcome Japanese companies to uh, come and join join our network. Okay, so let's talk about the japan Tampere relationship, which is the last question to talk about, okay? And, uh, you know, regardless of the distance, I feel kind of fundamental similarities between two countries to begin with, right? Culturally and emotionally, you know, the way of communication, way of negotiation, and, uh, you know, the kind of geopolitical settings in a way. And uh, many ways, the interests are facing the same way. You know, we are fitting nicely, right? And, uh, um, and uh, I'd like to bridge the two countries, uh, two cities, I would say, and uh, uh, come up with a visible outcome of the collaboration, right? Now, what's the uh, expected, uh, you know, uh, uh, the areas or technologies from Japan to uh, Tampere. When we talked about it uh, a few years ago, we were talking about, okay, uh, so a, uh, Tampere is good at uh, creating AI or software engineering, you know, the vision type of stuff, uh, right? Um, and then uh, maybe uh, we can bring in more the manufacturing uh, technologies from Japan. So let's say as an example, uh, you could provide the uh, the 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 uh, AI software, which can be mounted on the Japanese robot arm, <laughs> mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. right? So you know, if we create a joint task force to uh, come up with an innovative product, we can probably help other cities to implement innovative lifestyle and so forth. That that's the kind of discussion we had two years ago, I guess, Asepo-san. Right, mm -hmm. and then I think those discussions are still alive, although we had the uh, you know COVID nineteen kind of as an obstacle right now. So let, let me hear uh, your expectation to Japanese cooperation, cities or government um, for future collaboration. 
Well, I think that one of the uh, practical themes we have been already a little bit discussing about is around the artificial intelligence and the sort of a uh, human uh, aspect, aspect on those. How can we develop things uh, which use the data and artificial intelligence and what technologies can be connected there? And just mentioning one area, which I think is very, very interesting, uh, is around the healthcare and uh, well-being technology. So how can we uh, sort of a look at into, for example, the aging population, which, which both of our countries have, and, and a big challenge about uh, how to bring the technology into into you know the equation and uh, it is something which uh, I would love to see a cooperation uh, built on, on on that topic and uh, bringing in the uh, sort of the artificial intelligence analytics new type of sensors new type of robots new type of way of of, of doing things you know where we could take care of uh, of elderly people uh, so that they could stay home longer they could be you know uh, operative. Uh, uh, and, and, and self-standing longer with the help of technology. And I think that could be an area of a great, great cooperation. We have a, a good uh, hub for that here in Tampere with our, with our um, university uh, bringing a lot of research on both uh, medical and technology angle to it. And, and then we are putting a lot of that effort into our thinking going forward, looking at health data, use of health data into cooperating into our thinking. So that could be one example. We could definitely uh, look look at that. Uh, the, the other one is that we are also looking quite strongly on the, tech, on the uh, industry side of, of things, how to develop new technology around, you know, for example, system on chip manufacturing, which is one of the, the discussions we've been having in that sense, Seppo and Mark will know more about that uh, that idea. But uh, but I think that there are several uh, avenues we could actually start uh, building a very uh, pragmatic and, and practical uh, cooperation together with uh, with uh, with us and and, and Japanese uh, companies and cities. Thank you very much. That's a quick, quick comment and addition. What Teppo said exactly right that, but uh, I think uh, most of the things that we discussed two years ago was uh, are still valid. But uh, of course, COVID was between these these two years, and 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 I think we have also also learn a little bit more about our own uh, situation and maybe go step uh, ahead uh, in various AI type of activities so that I think now it's time even better for this kind of concrete uh, cooperation because I think we are more ready to do this kind of activities now. Thank you very much. All right, and uh, the, we could discuss even longer but the time is a little bit ticking. So let's conclude this session with uh, final words from each one of you, just briefly. Uh, anything, uh, you know, impression of this sem seminar or expectation to the future collaborations, just one words. Maybe uh, starting from Mark-san, then Seppo-san and Teppo-san to conclude. Mm -hmm. Well, thank, okay, thank you. It was, uh, you know, uh, very nice to have this invitation and uh, have the opportunity to give you some of the things that, uh, we have been doing. Uh, I think uh, looking forward to, you know, future, you know, cooperation. One of the, I think, uh, areas where we probably have common ground is also, you know, on automotive, automotive and autonomous, autonomous vehicles. So this test area uh, that we have have been building is, uh, you know, targeted for uh, testing autonomous vehicles. So that's maybe an area also to think about and. Uh, maybe research, uh, you know, programs or something like that would be an idea. So let's take take that up in the next uh, follow on follow on meetings. So thanks. Thank Seth, you very please. much. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for inviting us to this very interesting webinar series that you are organizing. And this was just the one. Uh, short snapshot of uh, Smart Tampere, what we have now done and implemented and, and looking forward to, to continue the discussion and, and future, future co cooperation in, in agreed manner. So thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, just to conclude, I'm, uh, I'm really, really happy to continue discussions. I, I mentioned earlier about uh, the fact that in my previous life, when I was working with a global consulting company, I had a lot of good good friends in Japan and worked together with, with them. And we always found a good common ground on, on topics. And I'm sure that this is an area we could definitely develop because of the similar way of thinking, the similar 
values behind uh, how we want to drive things, how we want to make them uh, look, you know, the future society, future cities uh, better. So I think that gives a great, great ground for future cooperation. And uh, we just need to uh, sort of uh, live through the uh, the period of restrictions and COVID that we have right now, and then try to do as much as we can, you know, with the, with the virtual, but hoping at least some point of time in not so, not so far future, to actually see and meet uh, meet face to face, and uh, already inviting you, as I was mentioning about our smart city week at the end of uh, January, early February, if that would be possible, I would love to see uh, Japanese guests coming here to to, and we would be uh, we would be uh, hosting you here with uh, with with a great joy. So looking forward to future cooperation, and thank you for this uh, invite and uh, this discussion. Thank you very much. Okay, let's keep talking. Uh, Mark-san, Seppo-san, Teppo-san, thank you very much. This concludes what the webinar today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. ido -san. Yes. So, uh, Teppo-san, Seppo-san, and Mark, uh, thank you very much for uh, today's great discussion. And uh, I think um, the audience really enjoyed uh, uh, the presentation and discussion today. And also, I'd like to say thank you for uh, Business Finland uh, to make this webinar happen as they coordinated uh, with uh, the city of Tampere and Business Tampere. So thanks again uh, for Business Finland. And um, for the future programs, please see the slides. And uh, um, thank you for viewing today and you will receive the uh, questionnaires after the event. And also our future programs will be available on Smart City Institute uh, Twitter uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. And also uh, uh, for the European Smart City uh, Inspired Week, um, this was the third, and also we have the fourth one uh, tomorrow uh, with uh, the uh, guest speakers from Barcelona City. So uh, we would appreciate if you could join tomorrow as well. And the uh, next week we will have Estonia Week. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, and we have guest speaker from uh, E-Governance Academy uh, in Estonia. Uh, they are the expert on uh, the digital government. And our Smart City Institute Japan, um, we have uh, 480 members and uh, 80 corporations uh, in our membership. And also our global partner organizations are increasing as well. So again, uh, thank you very much for viewing today and uh, we hope to see you tomorrow again. Thank you, bye-bye.